All right then guys, welcome to the video. Welcome back to the channel. Today we have got a full price breakdown on my Honda Civic Type R EP3. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I just thought the best time to do it was once it had been mapped because those are usually as far as people go and all that. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover everything I've done to this car as long as it's like performance related or aesthetics. So I'm not going to do like consumables. So I'm not going to do like O-rings and stuff like that. If it's like a Honda replacement part, even though it is obviously a cost, I associate that more with the cost of just general Really running the car. I'm just going to do stuff that's an upgrade from OEM basically. So before we start I just want to say I've had this car for five years so these costs are over that five-year ownership. You probably can get some parts cheaper somewhere else. You might be able to do it a different way or whatever. That's totally up to you. This is just how I've done it over these years. Some prices may even be different now compared to what I paid for them. There are some things here that I got either sent by companies or I've had a deal with a company because of me making the video. So there's prices that are slightly less due to that or there's things that I got secondhand that are way lower than the actual cost. Stuff like the exhaust, which you'll find out later, that's an insane one. And then also things like, yeah, just changing price or that I've got on a sale or something just through inflation or whatever. It's been five years, prices will have changed, I'm sure, over those five years. What I've done is I've got a spreadsheet on my phone of a list of everything. And I've, what I've also done for you guys is in the description, I have got a link to everything that I could find on this car that is possible to be bought new or whatever. I've got a link for it down below. And if it's through Kaizen, which are quite a lot of these parts you can get through Kaizen. You can also use my discount code OLLIEP3 to save yourself 5%. So if there's any stuff that you actually want, links for everything are in the description. Hopefully that helps some of you out if you're looking to get any of these parts. What we'll do is I will do a price that I paid and then the price that it costs new, just so you get an idea. And at the end, we'll have a calculation of what it costs me total and what it would cost if I bought everything brand new. Because quite a lot of the stuff on this car is secondhand, which is actually where I save most of the money. So there's some good deals to be had out there as long as you know what you're looking for. Sorry. I'm rambling, let's start with the outside. Okay, so we'll start around the front and as you can see, I've got an Airwalker style front lip. I got this from Fiberworks and I paid normal price, so similar price on the website. I paid £174 for this. At the time that I did this, a lot of people were running the Mugen front lip and not many people were running this lip, so I just wanted to be a bit different and I quite like how angular it is. It sort of flows with the design of the car. So it kind of makes the car look like a bit of a wedge, which I think is kind of cool. While we're still around the front, we'll talk about the headlights. So if you've seen my video, you would have seen that I pulled these apart, painted them up and everything. So if you haven't seen that video, what I actually did was I bought a second set of headlights to do because I knew it was going to take me longer than a day and I need, still need to use this car because this is my daily. So I bought a second set of headlights from Haas at Garage GP3. Those were £100 and then I spent £40 on hydro dipping the centre part around the headlight and then I did about £20 or so on materials for the paint, like the paint and the tape and stuff like that. So sort of around about £160. There are people that can do this for you if you can't be bothered to pull your own ones apart but if you are interested there is a video on my channel on how I did it. Still around the front so we've got this Mugen grill. I paid £205 for a few years ago now. It's been quite a while. I get loads of questions asking about this. So this is from HZ Dynamics. I think it is slightly more expensive now. I think it's £125 at the time of recording this. It doesn't come with any of the badges. As you can see my front badge has faded horrendously so I thought I'd bought a genuine one but obviously I haven't. So that is on order and it doesn't come with a Mugen badge either so you do have to source those. You can get them online though. Mine I got in a bar bin for a quid. So I'm very happy about that. And that's sort of it around the front really bodywork wise. So as we work our way around, I'm going to class the Honda Jazz washer jets as a mod because it is an upgrade and those I paid £22 for and they're currently £24 so not a crazy amount of saving on those. Those are still great. Love the different way it sprays. It's much better than the two jets that the OEM Civic comes with. So as we work our way around, I've got these Climair wind deflectors. I had two sets of the Heiko wind deflectors. Actually, I think the car came with some wind deflectors. I lost two of them to the motor away so that just proves that those aren't the best but I've had zero problems with these Climair wind deflectors. If you're looking for wind deflectors and you don't want to pay the crazy price for the JDM ones these are a great option because they don't use the clips that the Heiko ones use and I've had no issues at all they've stayed in the entire time. And then as we work our way around I've got this Mugen style wing with a carbon blade. I actually got this as a present I didn't actually pay for this so that's kind of cheating I know. Also worth mentioning I'm not including paint costs or labor or anything in this whole thing so I got this unpainted and 
had to get it sprayed and that's just going to vary from wherever you are so I didn't want to include stuff like that and these cost well I can only find the one from Delta Styling and their one is £290 I'm pretty sure this was cheaper than that though I think it was even from Amazon at the time but it's been I've had this for years so I don't know but the Delta Styling one was the only one I could find that was with the carbon blade but without this bit being carbon and then another fiberglass piece from Fiberworks this is their rear lip it's called the Fiberworks FX lip this cost me £132 I got this at the same time as I got the front lip just to save on postage but I paid retail price for it as well and the last piece of the bodywork is this rear plinth that I have hydro dipped I got this off of a crashed EP3 so it cost me just a tenner I don't know how much it would cost to hydro dip one so I just assume it would be like 40 quid or something based on how much I had to pay for the headlight parts so I just said that was 40 quid you might be able to get it cheap I don't know and yeah again I get loads of questions about that too so yeah it's just hydro dip it's not real carbon but there is a carbon plinth you can run over it if you don't want to take yours off because it is a, I remember it being a bit of a mission to do so yeah that is the exterior sort of bodywork stuff Okay, so let's move on to the engine bay. Quite a few bits in here, and now that this is the way it is, this is actually one of my favorite parts of the whole car. I just opened the engine bay and I'm still like, I can't believe this is my car sort of thing. So we'll start with this carbon slam panel. I got this from Carbon My Ride, and I bought this on, I think it was a Black Friday sale, so they had like 10% off or something like that. So I paid 144 pounds for it. It's currently 160 on their website. And something that ties in with that is the spoon radiator cap. I actually got this as part of like a welcome to Kaizen deal, so that was only 16 pounds. I've also got the red slam panel washers I get asked so many questions about these because I don't think that MJC sell these anymore I could be wrong all I seem to be able to find online when people ask me about it are the red FN2 versions of these so I don't know if those fit so I could be wrong I've linked those below just in case someone wants to give it a gamble and give it a go but I just cannot find these red EP3 ones anymore the other benefit to those FN2 ones is they've got a black Allen which does look kind of cool I pay 20 pounds for them and that's how much the FN2 ones are so I haven't saved any money there accompanying that are these red dress up washers that I've got on the headlights and I've dotted around the car a few different spots. I got those for free from Kaizen just because it's one of those miscellaneous parts that they just sent me, sort of tidies up the engine bay a bit, got rid of some rusty bolts and stuff. They just replaced some, the 10 mil bolts around the car or whatever so you can choose how many you decide to do or whatever. Those are £13 so not too bad either and you get more than I've actually put in the car. I've only just put a certain amount in. Moving on, more red stuff. I've got this red battery tie down. I only paid £10 for this. I think I got this at the same time as I got those washers because this is also from MJC and it's it was just the same red. There's multiple people that sell these as well. So if you don't quite like this design, I'm not even sure if they do this design anymore again, but this was £10. I can't find a link to this, but if you just search for red battery tie down, something will pop up. And then also below that, I've got this carbon fiber effect battery cover, which isn't real carbon. It's actually just a bit of wrap that I found someone selling on eBay. I paid £12 for this. There is a real carbon version out there. So I am going to get that at some point in the future because of all the extra real bits of carbon in the engine bay. This does stand out to me anyway. So I'll probably end up replacing this at some point so as we work our way around we've got this carbon fuse box cover carbon my ride were kind enough to send this to me it's definitely a worthwhile upgrade really transforms this area of the engine bay because it can be quite bland it is 75 pounds on their website currently so as we work sort of more into the engine area i've got the skunk 2 ultra inlet manifold and that i got for 500 pounds those are currently 550 pounds in black i think they're slightly cheaper in silver but i really wanted the black because i knew it would contrast well with the red and that was sort of the theme i was going for with this engine bay closely attached to that is that acuity tps sensor have had absolutely no issues with that so far and completely solved my tps issue that i was having i paid 92 pound 50 for that they are currently 95 pounds on the website a great little upgrade if there's something going on with your tps or you need to upgrade your tps for whatever reason that is a great one to go for then got the fuel rail with the carbon skin and the fuel pressure gauge so i paid 120 pounds for the fuel pressure gauge the carbon skin and the fuel rail as like a bundle and i love how the carbon looks it, it flows so well it just sort of breaks up the black to the red and also flows with all the rest of the carbon in the engine bay i'm super happy with how that looks and those are 140 pounds on the website a slight different design now and then probably one of my favorite recent pieces that i've bought i just had sat in the box for so long is this mugen rocker cover genuine mugen from mugen in japan love this thing and i love the oem red wrinkle finish it just ah oh, it's one of my favorite pieces on the whole car to be honest i love this thing so much and for a mugen part actually not crazy expensive yes obviously 
obviously you could buy a refurbished rocker cover and it'll cost you a lot less, but it's very hard to recreate this red. I love that it's genuine Moog and it's super cool. So that cost me 282 pounds. So I got a little bit of money off because these are 300 pounds normal price. And I've heard that they aren't gonna sell these forever. So that's why I had to jump on it when I did. And it was perfect timing and everything anyway. So super, super happy that I got that. I then got these black skunk two washers. It contrasts perfectly with the rocker cover and also flows perfectly with the inlet manifold as well. I've also got a Kaizen oil cap. Again, I got sent that, but those are 24 pounds. And I love the carbon fiber. It's real carbon fiber skin on the inside. Again, so it flows with all the rest of the carbon. As I'm sure you can tell, there is sort of a black red carbon theme to this engine bay and sort of throughout the car. And that ties in those parts really nicely. Obviously, you can't miss the beautiful Tegua M induction kit here. It is a stunning piece of carbon fiber. I love how this looks and I love how this sounds. So it's like a double win for me. I actually got this second hand. And also when I got it, it came with this scuttle panel, which from what I believe is this scuttle comes with the Group M induction kit, but doesn't come with the Tegua one. So you'd have to cut up your standard scuttle panel if you wanted to run this. I have managed to find one of these. So if you're interested in this, rather than having to cut up your OEM piece, I managed to find it on Fiberworks website. In total, I paid 375 pounds for the induction kit. I got an OEM hose, because at the time I had one of those long arm intake hoses that ran behind the bumper, one of the in-gen ones. I had that when I bought the car. So I didn't have the OEM hose. So I got OEM hose, the Tego induction kit, the scuttle panel, and this scuttle piece, all for 375 pounds. So that was a pretty good deal, because at the time I didn't realize that this was like a separate piece that you didn't get with all of them. The Tegua induction kit is 385 pounds. You get the induction kit, the hose I've got in red. I think there are two other colors and you get this carbon fiber skull piece here. If you want to add this bit on from Fiberworks, this is 108 pounds. And then as I said earlier, I was running the OEM hose for a few years before I decided to get this black hose to sort out the engine bay when I fitted the inlet manifold. So I paid 52 pounds for this. That isn't that much of a saving because they're 52 pounds or so on the website now. And while we're sort of in this area, I just thought I would mention the gearbox as it is just down here. So if you haven't watched my video on this, I basically got another gearbox with a Quaif LSD inside the gearbox and got that fitted at Garage GP3. I had a crunch in third gear, which I think was Synchros. And so basically I traded my old box, got this new one, which fun fact was out of Tom Peck's EP3 from back in the day, if you know that red car. No sort of final drive or anything, so that's all standard. But yeah, the Quaif LSD is a great, great upgrade or any LSD is a great upgrade for these cars. One of the top three favorite things I've done to this car. So fully recommend that. So I paid 900 pounds for the gearbox with fitting. Pretty crazy deal that, to be honest, because I think you're looking at around 250 to 300 pounds just for the gearbox. And then the Quaif LSD is 774 pounds currently. And that's without any fitting it into the gearbox or anything. So the labor that's involved with that, because mine was already in the gearbox, it was just a swap. The last bit, so I've got a genuine skunk to sock on the reservoir that I got as a Christmas present again. Those are 12 pounds new. And the spoon sock, that's, I assume not a real one. I got this off of one of the cars that was at Garage EP3 when I was having something installed. Has just let me have it. So those you can find on eBay if you don't want to pay the real price for the genuine spoon ones. As it was free, I just thought it was worth having on there. So as we move round, I was talk about the suspension setup and the wheels and tires and that sort of stuff, all this sort of area. First off, I've got the Yellow Speed Dynamic Pro Sport coilovers. I got these with loads of other suspension parts, which was actually my first video on this car on the channel. So I've got all of those bits as part of like a Black Friday sale thing. And some of the stuff was way more discounted than I realized at the time. So I got a great deal on some of this stuff. I paid 653 pounds for these coilovers brand new, which is crazy to think when they're 829 pounds brand new right now. As we're stood here, I've got these Enki RPF ones. I paid £730 for. Again, if you saw the video, you see that they don't quite fit without running a spacer. So I've got a five mil spacer in the front to clear the front brakes, which I'll get onto in a minute. And I've got a spacer in the rear to clear the rear trailing arm. But these are an ET45. So if you're looking to get some of these, get an ET35 and you shouldn't run into any problems that I've had. Yeah, I paid £730 for these wheels with some tires on that had some tread on. But to buy a brand new set of RPF ones without tires, you're looking at £1,245 to get a set. The tires I'm running on this, I've got Uni Royal Rain Sport 3s, which I, this is my second set. I've gone for a 215 now that I've got the wider wheel. You can't actually get Rain Sport 3s anymore, but you can get the most recent version and those come in about 266 pounds, which is what I paid for mine as well. So great tire. I'm probably gonna get some Michelin PS4s as my next tire, just to try those out. I've heard great things about those tires, so it seems stupid not to give them a go. So these Brembo brakes, this is a DC5 Brembo caliper with an S2000 disc that does then mean it can 
mount straight up to the hub and everything so there's no sort of brackets or anything and I've also got braided lines all round even on the rear that was part of a package that I got from Garage EP3 that was £600 to me which is pretty good with all the braided lines and everything that was the brake fluid and all of that all sorted and fitted the closest thing I could find as like a kit that you can buy it isn't a DC5 Brembo but it is still a Brembo caliper those are from Freaky Parts those are £881 for that kit but then that was, was obviously all brand new slash refurbished but it doesn't include fitting or anything like that I'm a big fan of how these things look that's one of the main reasons I got them the stopping power isn't that much different from the OEM caliper if anything you get less brake fade under continuous heavy braking and also changing the pads on these is so much easier because you can just pop the retaining clip out and they literally just pull out either side you don't have to remove the caliper to get them out that's an amazing plus overall I'm super happy with these so connecting to that we've got the front lower control arms and I've got the super pro compliance bushes in that they're like a poly bush kit for the front I needed to replace the bushings on this car anyway and it seems stupid not to upgrade them at that time I paid 114 pounds for those which again quite a good price those are currently 145 pounds I've then also got a JDM anti-roll bar which I found out I needed I thought that the progress front anti-roll bar would have been all right that I was previously running because I thought that that had also been designed with JDM exhaust manifolds in mind as well so when I got the spoon manifold fitted the progress anti-roll bar didn't fit so I had to get a JDM anti-roll bar from Haas again that's in the video if you want to check that out that cost me 90 pounds second hand and brand new they're 130 so it's up to you really but mine came with the drop links I haven't included those because they're basically an OEM replacement that's it in terms of suspension stuff on the front so as you come around the rear I've got the progress rear anti-roll bar I love how this thing looks out the back it just looks so cool and I paid 262 pounds for that again pretty good saving on full price which is 310 and I've also got the DME red lower control arms which you can't find red ones anywhere unless they're like eBay knockoffs so these are on eBay knockoffs and I don't understand why people don't make red ones because they look so cool I paid 134 pounds for them but they were 142 and I don't know where you can find any red ones so you're probably gonna have to go with a different color and while we're here we might as well talk about the exhaust so this is a full spoon exhaust I got this in three parts over time I started with the back box which I paid 164 and then my mid pipe fully rusted out and hit the floor it sounded horrendous so I had to get something and obviously I wanted to upgrade so I got the spoon B pipe that I paid 250 pounds for and then I was umming and ahhing about what to do with the manifold and then a genuine spoon manifold popped up for 300 pounds and I just had to say yes like I knew that nothing like this would pop up like that this full exhaust system cost me 710 pounds which is just insane because <laughs> this is where I've made most of my savings to be honest because if you were to buy all of this stuff brand new from spoon it would cost you 2965 pounds that is insane so I've made over £2,000 saving just on the exhaust if I was to buy this from Spoon directly crazy absolutely crazy so there are also a couple of little services and stuff that you can't physically really see one of those is the fast road setup i got from motion motorsport this is one of my top three favorite things i've done to this car definitely worth it completely transforms this thing and i believe i only paid 120 pounds which when you think of how happy i am with the outcome of that that seems like the best deal on this whole car to be honest that is what i assume is just the normal price i didn't get any deal with that or anything then we've got the mapping and ecu so i've got a honda vert ecu and i got it mapped at dino days that cost a total of 475 pounds they did me a little bit of a deal on the mapping of the car because i was making a video about it and obviously it's promotion for them i appreciate them for that so that is all of the exterior and everything done so let's move on to the interior which is where i actually spent most of the time when i first got this car So we're in the interior now and let's start with the steering wheel. So this is a Premier Edition steering wheel. So my car isn't a Premier Edition, which a few people have asked me about. It is just a Premier Edition steering wheel and I got the tints that, well, the tint already came on the car. So that's what makes it look like a Premier Edition anyway. So this wheel was pretty much in perfect condition when I got it, but through the years of use that I've had it, because I've had it a few years now, it's pretty worn out again. So I might be looking to get something different to replace it. I'm not sure yet. Or just get this one retrimmed, but I got it because it says Momo on it. That's basically it. My other one had leather literally falling off of it it was pretty horrible so that's why I replaced it I paid 80 pounds for that wheel which I thought was a pretty good price at the time because at the time I remember seeing them for around 100 pounds or so and I think they're still worth about that I've then got the JDM floor mats which again are one of my favorite things I run mats on top of those mats because I just don't want to ruin them those I paid 150 pounds for second hand and I'd say they're still worth it they might be going up a little bit in value to be honest I'm not totally sure I've also got this blocks gear knob which I bought years ago it's actually the only neochrome part I've got on the car 
car. I've been tempted to do some other neochrome somewhere just to sort of tie into this, but for some reason I just really like this. I don't want to run like a black one or a carbon fiber one. I just, there's something I love about this neochrome look. I paid 50 pounds for this and they're currently 54 pounds, but I couldn't find a neochrome one. There was just like a black platinum looking one that looked pretty cool as well. And then mated closely to that is the MJC short shifter. Again, one of my first videos I did on the channel with the car. That cost me 43 pounds and those are still the same price now. Again, a nice little upgrade that's quite easy to install if you're having problems with it. Have a look at my video. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't saved any money on that either. We've then got this head unit, which again, I've done a full video on. I'm still quite happy with it. There are a few little things that annoy me, like not having a physical volume button is kind of annoying. I mean, the boot up time takes quite a long time as well. And the voice call isn't quite loud enough to be able to hear over the exhaust if you're on the motorway or whatever. Any lower speeds and it's fine. It's just the max volume just isn't enough. But apart from that, it is great. It's a cheap alternative and it has Apple CarPlay, which is a big bonus for me because I love being able to control the music at the same time as looking at the maps or have a phone call on the screen as well as maps or whatever configuration. I paid £180 for that head unit. It's on eBay, so the, the prices go up and down. It's currently £200, but it might be different when you click on the link. And I've got this black fascia kit, which doesn't fit the best, I'll be honest. And I paid £18 for that kit. And that also came with some wiring, I believe, that I ended up not needing. So I think there might be a cheaper way of doing it where you don't get the wiring if you know that you're going to be all right. We've then got the spoon rear view mirror glass, which if you saw my video, I broke my first one. As hilarious as that was, it was very upsetting because at the time that was the only one in the country. So I had to wait quite a while to get this one as a replacement, which I haven't broken, <laughs> which I'm very happy about. It gives you a way wider view out the rear. Like I can see out of the passenger rear window at the same time as out the rear. It takes a bit of getting used to, but it's definitely a cool little upgrade. And obviously I love seeing the spoon logo and the blue tint just looks epic. So yeah, that I paid 16 pounds for and they are 42 pounds to buy new. So if you're thinking about it, I would recommend it because it's actually one of the cheaper options for a wide view rear mirror in these cars. I do also have this carbon fiber fake Mugen cover on the rear, but I haven't included that because I didn't pay for it and technically it isn't really on sale. I think you can get them on eBay for like 40 pounds or whatever. And if you want one, you can ask Kaizen to order one for you. And I think it'd be similar price unless you use my discount code, but I haven't included that because that was sort of a product that never really got released through Kaizen. But I do like how it looks. It's just a shame it's not real Mugen. So we get on to then the Hydro Dip trim. So I've got the full center console, the clock surround. I've got the door sections in here and I've got two parts in the engine bay. I get asked mostly about the bits in the engine bay to be honest, but I got all of it as a package deal off someone off on Facebook like three, four years ago. So I've had it for ages and I paid 150 pounds for all of it. And that included the spark plug cover on top of the engine. All of that was one package. So that's why I hadn't mentioned that earlier. So I don't know how much it would cost to get these bits hydro dipped and everything like how mine is, but I just put as a rough estimate, I assume it must be like 200 pounds minimum probably. So that's just how much I put it at. Just find out from your local hydro dipper. There's probably also a more realistic carbon design that's out there now as well, because this is pretty old. We've also got some fake Mugen pedals. Those are kind of annoying to fit. Well, you can run two of them without having to do any surge or anything, but the accelerator pedal, you have to actually screw it. What are these geese doing? Yeah, so if you're interested in the Mugen pedals, you just know you have to screw into your original pedal. I only paid 15 pounds for them. I knew that the... More geese? Where have all these geese come from? That's a lot of geese. Anyway, yeah, so I only paid 15 pounds for these. I knew that they weren't real and I just thought they look basically identical to the Mugen ones. You can probably find these online for around 25 pounds. I've left a link. And then last but not least by any means are these EK9 slash DC2 Type R Recaros. These are one of my favorite things I've ever done to this car. These are unbelievable seats for an OEM seat. I believe they're a Recaro speed seat, but you can't get this material anymore. So you can't retrim these because it will look very weird. It's a Honda specific red material that they just don't make anymore. I got the seats I paid £400 for and to make those work you have to run a Premier Edition Recaro seat rail so that's what I've got underneath these so I paid £400 for the seats and then £195 for the seat rail so in total it's £595 for the whole setup which for a pair of seats in the car I think is a pretty good deal to be honest and especially ones that look this good and are so comfortable. And there we go guys that is a full list of everything that I've done to this car. 
from what I can work out. If you've seen anything on the car that I haven't mentioned that I've just clearly missed out, then please do let me know because there are so many parts on this car. This list took me ages and I'm not sure if I've got everything or not. Also, obviously, I've got a total cost of all of this stuff. I've got a total cost of what it cost me and how much it would cost if you were to do all of this new. Bearing in mind, this doesn't include labor, it doesn't include paint, and it doesn't really include shipping, to be fair. In total, over these five years, this doesn't include buying the car either. It's cost me £8,722.50 in total. So with secondhand stuff, discounts, all that sort of thing. Pretty good saving because in total, if you were to buy it all brand new today, it would cost £13,656. So I've saved pretty much, it's just shy of £5,000. So it's worth mentioning that I don't actually care how much this costs. Like, I love this car. I don't think I'll ever sell it. It's so much fun and it's basically exactly how I want it to be. So could I have bought something else for the cost of all the parts and the car? Yeah, of course I could, but that's not the point. I've learned so much through building this car to where it is. It isn't finished yet. I just thought I would make this video now because it's at a point where most people would like to know the cost of things. There are still bits to do and parts to install and stuff moving forward. But as you can see, it's getting dark. So I'm gonna have to end this one here, guys. But like I've said, all the links to as much of this stuff as I could find online, everything is in the description. And again, if you're buying anything through the Kaizen website, use my discount code OLLIEP3 to save yourself 5%. Hopefully I've been able to answer questions that you guys had about the car and hopefully this acts as sort of like a good guide to be able to help you if you're looking to do any of the mods that I've done to mine. Let me know down below in the comments section if this was useful to you and if I've missed anything out, please do subscribe if you want to see more content with this car. I've got loads of videos on installing quite a lot of this stuff in this video. If you want to check out past videos, there'll be plenty of content coming as well. Please do consider subscribing, comment down below, like the video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.